It all started when Ling woke up like he had a hangover, tr trying to remember where he was. He quickly recalled being hung under a tree by his classmates. Hudi, one of his classmates, was genuinely curious how Ling had survived his beating for years. He reminded Ling about his in-game avatar from a game. He would criticized him for catfishing, making it seem he was cool when in real life he was ugly trash. Hui, irritated by Ling's face, continued pounding on him. Ling reflected on how lucky he was to have accidentally bumped into Hui during his freshman year. He thought about apologizing but knew it would be pointless since Hui was an airhead. Hui was also an Awakened. Awakener was the second evolution of humans, granted powers through the game Heavenland. Those who maxed out their characters in the game early gained a chance to experience their in-game skills in real life. The younger or stronger an Awakened was, the more valuable they became, enjoying elite privileges. Hui's friends started worrying that Ling might not survive this particular beating. Hui, clearly irritated, snapped at them for pitying a piece of trash like Ling. His friends clarified that they weren't worried about Ling, but about the mess it would cause if Hui ended Ling. Hui, annoyed, used his ability on Ling since Ling's mere existence bothered him. Ling, now taking massive damage, and Hui wondered why he never yielded after all that time. Ling coughed out blood and desperately wished he could also become an awakened. In the evening, Hui was bored of beating Ling. Hu and his friends left Ling battered and tied up. Ling continued to wish he could start over. He realized it was a useless dream. Later that night, Ling, having somehow survived, went home and took a bath. He put on his nerve gear and logged into Heavenland. Ling arrived at the main city of Casfido. Ling was a level 120 max level thief. He remembered how, despite his talent, he had started a year late and had struggled to catch up. Ling fought hard to get his hands on a rare dagger, but his ranking still made a nosedive. The only logical explanation was that others had also gotten top-tier equipment and secured their ranks. Ling sighed as he recalled how, in just a year, he had climbed from unranked to the top 100,000 players, but now he sat at rank 3.96 million. Ling gave up on ever reaching the top 100 of the Thief leaderboard, wishing for some way to start over. Meanwhile, a young lady argued with her bodyguard. She wanted to form a team with other players, but her bodyguard was against it. He warned her of scammers and shady characters in Heavenland. She was annoyed for being treated like a child sucking on a pacifier. The guard then told her he had hired a team, which Ling was included. Ling introduced himself to the group, but the guard barely gave him a glance, figuring out he was a loner and had no friends. One teammate asked if he was a member of the All-Class Alliance, an elite group of players. Ling claimed he was a solo player. The All-Class Alliance was where the most skilled players gathered. Ling was qualified to be part of them, but he was too broke to join the All-Class Alliance. The archer in the team didn't like solo players since they are usually carried by a team. Ling acted cocky, which irritated the archer. The Little Miss was worried that their mission would fail before it even started. Her guard then reassured her he would handle it. A brief moment later, they reached the teleporter, and Ling was told to go first, courtesy of ladies first. Suddenly, there was a malfunction, and the others wondered what was going on. They had never seen a malfunction and realized Ling had gone through the teleporter. Meanwhile, Ling wondered where he was and soon realized there was a malfunction. He tried to exit the game, but it was futile. Realizing he was cooked, Ling calmly accepted his fate. Outside the teleporter, the bodyguard wondered why Ling wasn't back and checked Ling's profile. He was shocked to find out that Ling had disappeared from the team. The next day, Ling woke up and wondered if he was alive. He sat down and realized something was off. When he looked in the mirror, he was stunned not to see an ugly face. He wondered if he was in the game. He got frightened by the old man in the room. Ling realized he was in the real world. The old man explained that he had found Ling unconscious while picking trash. The old man told Ling he was in his house and offered him some food. Ling wondered what had happened. The real shock came when he heard a radio announcement stating that Heavenland had just been released a few months ago. Ling, shocked, asked the old man what year it was. Upon hearing the answer, Ling realized he had gone back in time. He grinned, realizing his prayers had been answered. This time, he would become the strongest awakener and avoid getting beaten like a human piñata. The next morning, Ling was freeloading in the poor old man's house, eating every scrap of food the man had like a gremlin. The old man, being surprisingly generous, served him more and asked if Ling came alone. Ling's mood shifted as he recalled how lonely he had been, 
not knowing much about his parents and always in being kids who had families. Ling responded that he was alone. The old man was shocked by how calm Ling seemed about it, not knowing where he was. Ling just shrugged, saying they must be in the slums since his home looked like a garbage dump. The old man nodded, agreeing that this was, indeed, a place where the broke thrived. Ling could relate to the old man, being broke himself. He had relied on part-time jobs and dwindling savings to get by. Ling lived nearby in his previous life, so he knew the vibe well. The old man then opened up, telling Ling that he had bought the nerve year for Heavenland, spending all his savings for his son, who had sadly passed away. His son had promised to make him proud by becoming an awakener. The old man sighed, realizing his son had been foolish to think a game could lift them out of poverty. Just then, Ling interjected, saying that it was possible to change one's life if they became an awakener. He'd assured the old man that his son hadn't been an idiot, he'd just been ahead of his time. The old man teared up, touched by Ling's words, and told Ling that he reminded him of his son. He then asked if Ling had anywhere to go and offered for him to stay. Ling was thrilled knowing he didn't have to bother about rent and food. Later that night, the old man handed Ling the nerve gear he had bought. Ling was delighted. The old man asked if he could fulfill his son's dream. Ling then made a promise to fulfill his dreams and go beyond it. A few moments later, Ling logged into Heavenland and started setting up his avatar. He debated whether to make his avatar a human, elf, or beast, knowing each had different profession bonuses. There were five major professions, warrior, archer, mage, thief, and cleric. The thief profession, which Ling favored, had different specialties depending on race. Human thieves specialized in assassination and stealth. Elf thieves focused on speed and dexterity and beast thieves were all about raw power and frontal attacks. Ling decided to stick with the human thief, since it was what he was familiar with. He allocated his attribute points, focusing on agility. Confident that he had a solid plan this time around, Ling prepared to enter the game. Then, a countdown began. In the main city of Casfado, Ling received a prompt message and was in the game. Ling was immediately stunned by the sheer number of players. Ling wondered that though the game had launched only three months ago, it was already packed. Quickly, Ling decided to check the rankings and was unsurprised to find that the top player was Budong. It was the same player who had reigned supreme in his past life. Ling realized that the experts from his previous life were already claiming their spots at the top. Knowing he had no time to waste, he planned to use everything he had learned in his previous life. His first step was to drip then boost his speed and agility. Ling was determined to become the first awakened and entered into the teleporter. A while later, Ling arrived at the new village which he was very familiar with. He was always surprised with the amount of players there. Ling saw players selling items to the noobs while others looked for players to carry them. Some newbies rushed to buy overpriced items from a higher level player. Ling recalled how, in his previous life, he had also scrambled for overpriced starter gear like a total idiot. All those items could easily be found on level 3 of the map, and upgrading was simple in the early stages. However, once players hit level 5, they were restricted from lower level areas unless it was for a special mission. Ling wanted to level up as soon as he could. Suddenly, an elf chick wanted help in leveling up and claimed she was obedient. After Ling was done obling her, he realized that level 3 and 4 players were considered celebrities in the new village. The level 5 players were godlike beings in the new village. In Heavenland, players could form a group at level 1, but the level difference couldn't exceed two levels. It was an opportunity for Greenhorns to refine their skills alongside experts. Ling understood why groups were such a big deal. It was because of the overwhelming number of missions, so nudes required teamwork. There was no fixed main storyline since missions were assigned based on a character's abilities. Although upgrading was easy at first, the scarcity of monsters made it a challenge. Ling with an ugly smirk was confident he had a faster way to reach level 5. Later, Ling strolled to the shopping street, where he found the noob shop. Inside, some pesky players were obling the NPC lady behind the counter. Ignoring them, Ling ordered a primary accelerator scroll and a single-use grappling hook. The players by the counter snickered at him, mocking him for being a greenhorn. They couldn't believe he was wasting his money on trash when he could just pay them for a level boost. Ling took the items and left not without throwing a parting shot at the pesky players. Ling smirked and asked them how long it took to reach their current level. They responded that it took close to two weeks to reach their current level. Ling told them they would still remain in the new village for some days. 
They were confused, but he told them he would meet them the next day as the sun began to set. Later that day, Ling headed to the main city's mountain. He wasn't surprised to find fewer people there. He smiled, glad he could grind and upgrade in peace. Just then, he overheard some players complaining about how difficult the mountain quest was. The quest required one to reach the top of the mountain within 10 minutes. The quest seemed impossible to the players no matter the route they took. Suddenly, Elf Chick ran towards the players complaining, crying about how she had failed the quest and lost XP in the process. The simps in her orbit immediately tried to calm her down. Her team had disbanded, but they assured her they would help her level up again. Ling kept moving and soon encountered the Sunset Elder who issued the infamous quest. He accepted it without hesitation. The same players from before spotted him and couldn't resist mocking him. They wondered if Ling's brain had been replaced with his balls, as they were convinced only high-level players could pass the quest. Ling revealed that he had used his 12 starting attribute points to boost his agility, specifically for this mission. In his previous life, he had given up on it, but this time, things were going to be different. As the countdown began, Ling took off, blitzing up the mountain, determined to claim his first win. At the main city's mountain, Ling sprinted towards the jungle to complete the mission. Meanwhile, the players watching were eager to see him fail. Just then, they noticed he wasn't following the normal route to the top. Ling had no time for the safe and convenient path, and instead dashed into the jungle since it was the shortest route. The reason no one used the jungle was because of the random spawning monsters that could ruin your day. Ling had run through the jungle countless times in his previous life and knew the big mouth grass monsters were key to clearing the mission quickly. The grass monsters attacked, but Ling used his backstab skill to dispatch them, keeping a close eye on its cooldown timer. Just then, back at the starting point, Elf Chick and her sim squad couldn't believe Ling had chosen the monster-filled jungle. Elf Chick smirked, betting he wouldn't last a minute, and the simps eagerly agreed with her. Inside the jungle, Ling pushed forward but soon found himself swarmed by grass monsters. He was well aware that there was a fault in the road ahead that would add more time if he went around. With the top of the mountain in sight, he knew there should be a nest of grass monsters nearby. Spotting the nest, Ling decided to use the accelerator scroll he had purchased earlier. He activated the scroll and immediately followed it up with his backstab skill on the nearest monster. He used the grass monsters as stepping stones, springboarding off them to get closer to a hanging branch. Ling then deployed his grappling hook. Ling shot himself higher, remembering that another grass monster would appear near the edge of the mountain. Timing his next backstab perfectly, he took it out and landed gracefully at the top, with five minutes to spare. The Sunset Elder, who had issued the quest, was surprised to see Ling reach the summit in less than half the time. He congratulated Ling on his determination. Ling knew if he couldn't complete the quest, there would be no way he would be at the top. Unbeknownst to Ling, completing the mission so quickly had unlocked a hidden quest. The Sunset Elder, impressed by his resolve, compared it to his own. He presented him with his emblem, leading to a secret quest. Ling was then given the reward for the mission, the Extreme Creation Set, which he immediately equipped. The Sunset Elder claimed that his purpose had been fulfilled and hinted that they would meet again, as long as Ling kept up his determination. In a flash, the Sunset Elder gave Ling a quick uber ride back to the bottom of the mountain. Meanwhile, Elf Chick and her Sim Squad wondered why Ling was taking so long. Elf Chick concluded that Ling would be a clown if he showed up after failing miserably. Just then, something shot down from the sky and landed close to them. At first, they feared it was a monster, but their jaws dropped when they saw it was Ling. He struck a dramatic pose, as if he had been rehearsing that moment for hours. At the bottom of the mountain, the Sunset Elder's appearance caused quite the scene, drawing the attention of players nearby. Elf Chick, still in disbelief, wondered how Ling had completed the mission and where he got the threads he had on. Players around them started to buzz with excitement, eyes glued to Ling's gear, each hoping they could score the same loot. Ling, realizing he was suddenly the center of attention and didn't know how to handle it since was an evil loser. Just as things were getting overwhelming, the Sunset Elder opened a portal and was planning on bailing Ling. Players began to wonder if it was a unique quest. There were three types of missions in Heavenland, bounty missions from dungeons, encounter missions from specific NPCs, and unique missions, which could only be completed by one player. Unique missions were like limited edition toys you never got as a kid. The missions were also categorized into individual or team-based, with difficulties ranging from low to insanity. 
As the Sunset Elder was about to go into the portal, he mentioned that Ling would meet him again if he continued on his path. Ling wanted to ask more about the mission, but got cut off when the Sunset Elder disappeared. Suddenly, Ling received a system prompt that his mission had been updated to a unique mission of unknown difficulty. He had a ton of questions, but decided to let it slide. Leveling up was more important. Meanwhile, Elfchick noticed the attention Ling was getting and decided to use her womanly charm on Ling to help her level up. Ling, who never had any experience with a lady, found it difficult to resist her jugs. However, things took a sharp turn when the players she originally planned to team up with got angry at her sudden betrayal. Elfchick and her sim squad started bickering while Ling discreetly hid his new gear to avoid more attention. Elfchick was shocked when Ling rejected her, claiming that they couldn't handle the mission he was headed for. This, of course, infuriated the players, who were all higher levels than Ling, and they challenged him to a duel. Ling raised an eyebrow and asked if they were serious. The challengers were rattled by his massive aura and backed off immediately, terrified that they'd bitten off more than they could chew. Feeling dumped and embarrassed, Elfchick was left to deal with her former teammates. She went back to them and Sideburn Kuhn questioned if she really thought they were that stupid. She told them she would reveal her special equipment, and they all bent the knee, eager to follow her lead again. Meanwhile, in a level 5 map, Separate teams were battling an ant army in the middle circles of the ant army basin. Glasses told his captain he was running low on mana and suggested they retreat. The captain insisted they finish off the ant monsters in the middle circle before pulling back. Another player in their team got ahead of himself and almost got caught by an ant monster. Luckily, he was saved just in time by the team's archer. The archer reminded them they weren't ready for the inner circle just yet. The group knew that only elite level 5 teams from the 5 major guilds dared to venture into the inner circle. Those teams had at least 2 healers and all their members were level 5, so the loot was tempting but the risk was enormous. Just then, the archer caught sight of a mysterious figure. It was a level 1 thief effortlessly slaying the ant monsters on his own. They were stunned, trying to comprehend what they were seeing, but were even more shocked when they realized the thief was heading straight for the inner circle. They watched in disbelief, wondering whether he didn't get the memo about not walking into a death trap. A few minutes earlier, Ling had arrived at the level 5 map, surveying the bustling scene. He saw merchants hawking their goods in groups of players, teaming up to take down the ant monsters. Ling knew that once he surpassed level 5, he would no longer have access to this zone. The map was structured into different segments, the outer circle, middle circle, and the notoriously dangerous inner circle. Most teams of players stuck to the safer outer and middle circles, while only the most elite, like the soldiers of major guilds, dared venture into the inner circle. Ling, equipped with the pinnacle set he received from the Sunset Elder, felt confident that he could not only survive but also level up quickly by taking on the ant monsters in the inner circle. Ling knew that was the only way he could reach level 5 quickly or he would have to depend on plot. Meanwhile, a team from one of the major guilds, Nebulous, was having issues. One of their teammates, who had a red name, had just dropped an important item after being defeated. The team chastised him, claiming he had underestimated the difficulty gap between the middle and inner circles. The red named player had been grinding in the middle circle, oblivious to the immense danger of the inner zone. He had now dropped a level, which meant they were no longer a full level 5 team, adding to their frustration. Ling, observing the situation from a distance, recognized the guild. He knew that only the major guilds dared to send their elite teams into the inner circle. Seeing the red-named player's frustration, Ling casually approached. She guts warned him to stay out of trouble, emphasizing that this was no place for a newbie. Ling smirked at their caution and asked if they needed something from the inner circle which he could retrieve. The red-named player scoffed, calling Ling a clown. The captain, Dira, looked at him and wondered if this was one of his tricks in his clown show. Ling was unfazed and ready to retrieve the item for them. The team, seeing no harm in humoring him, told Ling the item was lost near a boulder in the inner circle. Before the captain could say more, Ling vanished, leaving them to question if he was serious or just trolling. Ling promised to retrieve the item but expected to be paid. The team members wondered how they'd pay Ling if he succeeded. Dura waved them off, since she thought the whole thing was a load of crap. As Ling moved toward the inner circle, he sliced through waves of ant monsters, his agility and pinnacle set giving him the edge. The XP game was massive, and since no one else dared venture this deep, he had the entire inner circle to himself. Ling quickly leveled up, reaching level 2, then 3 and 4 in a short span of time. 
With each level, his confidence grew, and his movements became more fluid and precise. He could feel the progress, and it fueled his desire to push further. As night began to fall, most players started to retreat from the area, not wanting to risk staying out too late in such a dangerous zone. But Ling pressed on, knowing this was his moment to grind uninterrupted. His relentless progress began to draw attention from other teams nearby, who watched in shock as Ling, now level 5, effortlessly cut through the ant monsters that gave even level 5 teams trouble. Whispers spread throughout the map about Ling. Ling smirked as he pulled the weapon he was to retrieve from the ant army basin. He had reached level 5 in record time, just as he had planned. A while later, Ling got a notification that he had lost his pinnacle set upon reaching level 5. Later that night, she guts ordered her teammates to retreat, but the red-named player was concerned about Ling. Their captain punished him for losing his equipment and relying on a newbie to get it back. Strangely enough, he was thrilled with the punishment as she rubbed his face on her jugs. He told Dira that, with the look in Ling's eyes, he completely trusted him. The captain, skeptical, wondered what look he saw since all she could see was an idiot reading to unalip himself. Just then, Chatter started among the players about Ling's actions in the Ant Army Basin. Ling was trending on their forum, piquing she guts curiosity about who this guy was. Suddenly, Ling showed up and asked what they'd offer for the weapon he had collected. She guts was shocked to learn he had reached level 5 in such a short time. They asked him how he managed such a feat, but Ling casually claimed that anyone could do it with the right special equipment. He was paid, but the captain wasn't buying it, knowing it took real skill to defeat Ant Monsters. Ling bid them farewell, but she guts saw an opportunity and tried to recruit him. Ling reminisced about how joining a guild like Nebulus had been a dream in his previous life. It was one of the five major guilds back then, and though he never got the chance to join, being a member was a big deal. In his past life, Ling's only goal was to max out his level. He considered two options, unlocking the pet system or focusing on advanced equipment and special missions, which he had ignored. He had spent hours searching for guides on leveling up faster, knowing he could only make a living after reaching max level. Now, with more experience, Ling had options. He told them he'd think about the offer. He knew joining a guild was inevitable, but decided to leave it to fate, choosing instead to hunt down better equipment sets. Back in the new village, players were clamoring to have Ling join their teams, and he quickly realized that level 5 players were treated like Beyonce. Meanwhile, at the new shop, the players who had bet against Ling couldn't wait to see the look on Ling's stupid face. However, when Ling arrived, they were dumbfounded to see that he had reached level 5. Ling headed straight to the shopkeeper to sell some items, and bought a whole bunch of Molotov and invisible potions. He also snagged a level 5 Whitewood dagger from the weapon shop. With his gear sorted, Ling was ready for action. He had fast-tracked his grind to level 5 to unlock a hidden dungeon he knew about. From his past life, he remembered there was a secret ant nest near the ant army basin, the queen ant's nest. Clearing this would unlock another hidden dungeon, the dark forest. Ling was determined to risk it all to get his hands on some high-level equipment. Later, after unlocking the hidden dungeon, Ling found himself facing a swarm of ant soldiers, but he was prepared. He downed an invisible potion and stealthily snuck through the dungeon, taking out ant soldiers one by one. When the potion wore off, he took another, repeating the same strategy. Eventually, he ran out of invisibility potions, but by then, it didn't matter since he had reached Queen Ant's lair. Upon confronting the Queen Ant, Ling used his Molotov to block the Ant Soldier's path. He knew from experience that without her soldiers, the Queen Ant was weaker than a low-level goblin, and he used this to his advantage. Grabbing another handful of Molotov, he blasted her repeatedly until she was defeated. The system message flashed that the Queen Ant defeated. Later that night, she guts called for a meeting with the high-ranking members of Nebulus. They arrived expecting news of a hidden item, not to hear about her meat riding some guy she saw in battle. Dura told them she had a gut feeling Ling was special, and they needed to recruit him before anyone would snatch her beloved. The others were skeptical, wondering why a mere level 5 thief was making her fangirl so hard. Dura emphasized that his mysterious nature made him stand out from the rest. Tyna, the guild beauty stepped in to defend Dira, telling the other members not to be so hard on her since she was only trying to look out for them. Tyna then told Dira to invite Ling so they could see what made her meat ride him so much. She guts apologized for meat riding him, but stressed that she genuinely wanted him in the guild. Dura ogled at Tina and couldn't help but admire her beauty even though she was straight. 
Suddenly, they received a system message that the Queen Ant's nest had been cleared, and a hidden dungeon had been unlocked. The Nebulous members were immediately buzzing, wondering who could have soloed such a difficult dungeon. They went psycho like they were crack, figuring out what guild the player belonged to. Tyna calmed them down, reminding them of the task at hand. She told them players would rush the newly unlocked dungeon, which was an opportunity to scout for new members. Just then, a simp popped up like a sore thumb and agreed with Tina. He suggested they should hurry to the dark forest. Meanwhile, word of the hidden dungeon spread fast, and players flocked to the new shop, stocking up on items in preparation for the dark forest raid. At the dungeon's entrance, Ling arrived, and wasn't surprised by the huge crowd of players queuing up to enter the dark forest. He knew only players above level 5 couldn't enter, so he had come prepared. While he had already stocked up on items, he needed other players to form a proper team. Players who had previously ventured into the dark forest warned others that the difficulty was no joke. They barely escaped with their lives, and their equipment proved ineffective against the dungeon's challenges. While the low and intermediate difficulties had been completed, the advanced difficulty was still a mystery, and everyone figured it would be a long time before anyone dared tackle the special and insanity difficulties. In the crowd, Ajik found it hilarious that major guilds were keeping an eye on the proceedings, including Nebulus who were busy scouting for new recruits. Bailey, Tina's number one simp, fantasized about the reward he would get from Tina for recruiting a good member. Tina interrupted his daydream and reminded him that other guilds were present, and he needed to focus. Tina wondered if they'd spot the guy Dero was meat riding and kept a lookout. At the dungeon entrance, Elf Chick and her crew made their appearance. She used her womanly charms to command loyalty from her crew, who followed her like devoted dogs. Just then, Ling approached, unintentionally interrupting their sim time. Elf Chick was shocked to see that Ling had already reached level 5 and immediately began fawning over him. Her crew was annoyed, but Ling offered to help them clear the Dark Forest dungeon. He wasn't interested in gathering strangers to form a team, so he decided to stick with the trash team he was familiar with. The sim squad told Ling he would pay if they lost. Ling agreed, but he set a condition that they had to keep their information anonymous. He told them he would only take one piece of equipment from the raid. They agreed, and Ling was ready to dive into the dark forest. The crew was confused by his urgency, especially since they hadn't even made a proper plan yet. However, their confusion quickly turned into concern when they realized that Ling was aiming straight for the insanity difficulty. At the far corner of the dark forest entrance, the Nebulous Guild were scouting for potential recruits when they noticed a sudden shift in the atmosphere. Players around were focusing on the dark forest portal where someone had just entered the dungeon on insanity difficulty. Everyone was shocked. They couldn't believe that someone with a loose screw would challenge the insanity difficulty right after it was released. The Nebulous members began debating whether it was a lone player with a death wish or a top player from the number one guild. They turned to Tina for her thoughts, and she confidently stated that it had to be a solo player tired of living. Meanwhile, at the Dark Forest entrance, Ling and Elfchick's crew were drawing attention from the crowd of onlookers. Players couldn't believe what they were seeing. The same players who had watched major guilds struggle to clear even the advanced difficulty were now witnessing this ragtag group prepare for insanity difficulty. Sideburns was eager to bask in the attention, thrilled to be treated like Michael Jackson had come back to life. Seeing his excitement, Ling decided it was time for them to enter the dark forest. Shortly after, Nebulous members came forward to gather information about the team with large balls attempting the insanity difficulty. Fatty proudly reported that the group was made up of solo players. After his bit of kissing toward the division captain, Fatty secretly hoped this would be his ticket into Nebulous. However, he was swiftly rejected, and his face soured, feeling as though he was being looked down on. Just as tension built, members of the third-ranked guild, Wolfsfawn, showed up, mocking Nebulous and trying to stir up trouble. Some players began debating which guild was better like the rivalry between Messi and Ronaldo. Bailey, Nebulous division captain, was visibly irritated, but Tina stepped in to calm him down before things escalated. The escort of the vice captain of the Wolf's Fung party took a jab at Tina, mocking her for being Bailey's woman. Unfazed, Tina brushed off the insult, claiming with such a generic face she was basically a background character. Tina told her not every woman needed a guy to boost their stats and like her. The girl fumed and plotted with the vice captain to get rid of Tina during the upcoming monthly guild war. As the Wolf's Fong members discussed the insanity difficulty, 
they decided to gather more intel from the players inside before heading back to report. Meanwhile, inside the Dark Forest, the Sim Squad started to lose their nerve. Realizing that even top guilds couldn't clear advanced difficulty, they feared they were being used as bait. Ling told them to keep quiet and warned them that they would become dinner for the monsters if they didn't. Cyperns was on edge and suggested to Elfchick that they bail and leave Ling behind. She was tempted but decided to stay since she had her eyes on the loot she could earn. Ling then sent them some items, and the crew was stunned by the quality of the equipment he had provided. They knew how expensive the fire attribute gear was, and wondered if he was secretly Bruce Wayne. Ling explained that bugs, like the ones they'd face, were vulnerable to fire. With that, the group began putting on their new threads and were ready to drip. They were impressed but still nervous about tackling the insanity difficulty. To their surprise, Ling revealed a whole stash of Molotov cocktails. They confirmed that he had to be Bruce Wayne. He shrugged off their comments, explaining that the Molotovs were crucial for defeating the boss. They pressed him for more details, but Ling stayed vague, promising they'd find out soon enough. Ling had been carefully upgrading his stats in preparation for this moment, and was now at the level where he could use the expensive equipment he'd invested in. He suited up, and the Sim Squad was shocked to see him dripping on the precious gear for a level 5 player. Now fully equipped, the team was finally ready to take on the insanity difficulty head-on. In the past, it was well known that the insects in Heavenland had an intense sense of danger, causing them to hide or flee at the slightest hint of a threat. In the dark forest, they spotted a praying mantis monster and elf chick almost blew their cover. Ling quickly warned her to stay quiet, unless she wanted to end up like the poor wolf the monster had just sliced into pieces. Eventually, the praying mantis monster fled. Ling reminded them that if they had revealed themselves, they would have attracted a horde of monsters and they would be Jover. The crew started wondering whether they'd need to fight all the monsters, knowing how tough that would be. Ling assured them they wouldn't have to fight, and then explained the different zones of the Dark Forest. There were three zones, the Praying Mantis Zone, the Moth Zone, and the Spider Zone. He also revealed the existence of a special species, the Weeping Birds. The Sim Squad were curious about this new creature, while Elf Chick daydreamed, thinking it was her ticket to becoming the next Jeff Bezos. Ling cut in and explained that the Weeping Bird was their key to reaching the boss without having to face any monsters. The group began to goof off and Ling realized he was stacked with a cast of idiots in the forest. The crew finally introduced themselves. Ji Run, Anti-Mainstream, Longface, AK as Sideburns and Xiao, Elf Chick. After the intros, they ventured deeper into the forest to find the Weeping Bird. A while later, they spotted one. But Xiao wasn't impressed. Seeing how worthless the bird looked, her dreams of becoming the next Jeff Bezos faded. Ling fed the birds some food and, to their surprise, received a hidden item, the weeping flute. They never would have guessed that such a worthless-looking bird had a hidden item. Ling reminded them that there were no useless NPCs in Heavenland. With the weeping flute in hand, they were ready to head straight for the boss. Curious, they asked Ling how he knew so much about the game. Ling, unable to tell them the truth, claimed he had learned all this from the library, which they believed. They had thought the library was just for decoration, and they were shocked to hear it had actual information. Ling then showed them the map of the Dark Forest and told them they would follow the damp swamp path. The group were worried he was sending them on a admission, but Ling reassured them that the weeping flute would keep the insect monsters at bay. Xiao, enthusiastic at first, suddenly realized her dress would get soaked. Xiao's crew began to act like drama queens, whining about their clothes getting wet. Ling, already frustrated, gave them another option which was to face the monsters instead. They soon arrived at the monster zone and Xiao spotted a massive spider monster ready to eat them with a serving of fries. Just as they began to panic, Ling blew the weeping flute and the monsters scattered in fear. They couldn't believe it actually worked. Ling, keeping his cool, told them to stay focused, warning that they could easily get lost and become monster snacks if they weren't careful. After navigating through the forest, they finally reached a safe zone. Ling was relieved everything had gone according to plan so far. Just then, the boss portal appeared, and nostalgia washed over Ling. Cyperns asked if Ling had a Vesoyam cheat code to bypass the boss fight altogether. Ling grinned and told him they had to defeat the boss the old-fashioned way. Later that night, in the dark forest, Jiren was busy setting up his Molotov when suddenly he got a DM from Cyberns. Ju-Run wondered why Sideburns was in his DM like he was trying to hit on him. 
After Sideburns finished setting up his Molotov, he couldn't help but wonder how Ling knew so much about the Mud Dragon's territory. Earlier, Ling had told Xiao and her Sim Squad that they wouldn't stand a chance at defeating the Mud Dragon at their current level. He explained that the plan was to use Molotov, since the Mud Dragon was weak against fire. It also had a mode where it took even more damage from flames. Sideburns wasn't convinced, though he wondered how they were supposed to get close enough to throw the Molotov. It wasn't like the Mud Dragon would stay idle waiting to be slayed. Ling sent a map coordinate to the group, telling them where to set up their Molotov and wait for it to signal. After some moments of anxious silence, Chi Run figured Ling must have cleared the lower levels which was why he had knowledge of the Dark Forest. He had faith in Ling, though Sideburn had enough of Jay Run meat riding Ling. The rest of the crew were tired of waiting and just wanted to get it over with. Ji Run, however, was still pondering how exactly Ling planned to lure the Mud Dragon on his own, knowing how fearsome the beast was. In the Mud Dragon's lair, Ling was already prepared to strike. Using his newly acquired combo accumulation skill, he made a critical hit that woke the dragon from its slumber. Enraged, the beast tried to attack Ling, but he effortlessly dodged its strikes, hopping around the mud dragon like an annoying mosquito. The mud dragon retaliated with a blast of acid, but Ling knew all of the mud dragon's tricks. With a quick leap, Ling delivered a powerful backstab, making the beast roar in pain. An hour later, Xiao was growing impatient, and anti-mainstream was starting to think Ling had ghosted them. Sideburns wondered if Ling had failed but Ji Run pointed out that Ling's health was still full according to their team info. Suddenly, Ling's voice crackled over their comms, telling them to get ready. A cloud of dust appeared on the horizon, and Ling told them not to panic. When Xiao and the crew saw the Mud Dragon's health bar, they were shocked that Ling had taken it down to a third of its health all by himself. As Ling neared the middle of the battlefield, he yelled for them to throw their Molotov at the Mud Dragon. They obeyed hurling the fiery cocktails and setting the beast ablaze. Sho, watching the flames engulf the monster, suddenly realized she might have discovered a new kink. She began tossing the Molotov like a maniac, and her crew were genuinely worried. Ling quickly warned them that once the Mud Dragon entered its berserk mode, the Molotov would stop being effective. Then, out of nowhere, he told them to smash the Molotov on him. The crew stared at Ling like he had completely lost his mind. Ling insisted, and after a brief hesitation, Jay Run chucked a Molotov at him. To everyone's astonishment, Ling activated the special ability of his gear, turning himself into a literal human torch. Outside the dark forest, players were growing restless, waiting to see if the team that had entered would come back in one piece. Some figured they had already failed, especially since even one of the major guilds had struggled with the advanced difficulty. Bailey, standing in the crowd, was more preoccupied with simping for Tina than caring about what was happening inside the dungeon. Wasabi Kun, one of Nebula's high-ranking members, casually praised the team that had entered the insanity difficulty. Bailey, half-listening, asked Wasabi Kun for the special item he had gotten from the level 8 dungeon. Wasabi Kun tried to evade the question, but Bailey dragged him back like Wasabi Kun owed him some money. Wasabi Kun explained that he needed the item to raise his rank in the arena. Bailey was uninterested and left since he didn't give two sh** about the arena. The only thing on his mind was Tina as he gazed at her while she was fixated on the team that challenged the insanity difficulty. He sidled up to her and asked why she was so fixated on the team that challenged the insanity difficulty. Tina told Bailey that she had a good feeling about them. Bailey wasn't buying it but decided to stay quiet. Meanwhile, deep inside the dark forest, Ling had turned into a literal human torch and was facing the mud dragon which had now entered berserk mode. Ling knew things were about to get real. The monster launched at him, but he nimbly dodged, throwing some Molotov at it in midair like some kind of fire-dancing ninja. Shio's crew watched in awe, amazed with the show they were witnessing which they couldn't get on Netflix. Just then, a system message popped up in front of Ling that his combo skill had maxed out. He activated his Jet Rush skill and threw another set of Molotov at the Mud Dragon, launching a barrage of blazing strikes. Ling leaped onto the dragon's back, using his equipment's ability to deal a final critical blow, and with that the mud dragon was defeated. After the fight, Xiao remembered Ling had asked her earlier about healing, and he had given her a debuff dispelling skill to learn. She quickly used it on him, following it up with a healing spell. Ling thanked her, admitting he still wasn't used to his new fighting style. Back outside, the waiting players were starting to lose patience muttering that it probably wasn't worth sticking around for scraps of information. 
Still, members of the Wolf Bang Guild lingered, knowing that whatever they learned would be valuable intel. Then suddenly, a system-wide message hit everyone's screens that the insanity difficulty of the Dark Forest has been cleared. Shocked gasps rippled through the crowd. Even the usually cocky Wolf Bang members were left speechless. Over at Nebulous, jaws dropped as Tina's good feeling was proven right. Bailey, no longer simping, was actually surprised. Tenna, on the other hand, was laser-focused, desperate to find out who the leader of this miracle team was. Just then, Ling and Xiao's crew emerged from the dark forest, greeted by a crowd of wide-eyed players. They had gone in as nobodies and come out as instant celebrities. Outside the dark forest, players began cheering and praising Ling and Xiao's crew for clearing the insanity difficulty. Xiao's crew, still in shock from the victory, were even more surprised at the massive crowd that had gathered. Some players rushed up, bombarding them with questions about how they pulled off such an impossible feat. Xiao, basking in the attention, was secretly thrilled but tried to keep her cool in front of the others. Ling, however, expected this level of attention which was why he told them to hide their in-game information to avoid becoming a target. He told them they needed to find somewhere quiet to split the loot. As they walked away, trying to escape the chaos, the Wolf Bang crew intercepted them. The vice captain of their third division swaggered up, introducing himself in that smug way only a top guild member could. Ling knew their type all too well. From his past experience, Wolf Bang were top three in the rankings of guild, but number one when it came to being cocky. Ling remembered how they used to bully solo players into joining their guild and slayed those who wouldn't. Anti-mainstream wondered if they were about to get recruited, but Sideburns knew they were trash to even be considered. The vice captain, sensing they were unaffiliated due to their hidden info, was keen to recruit them, asking who the team leader was. When he found out the captain was a thief, he wondered how someone with a trashy attribute succeeded in leading a team. When he asked Ling if he was interested in joining their guild, Ling ignored him completely like he was a whisper in the wind. The vice captain was furious. Anti-mainstream tried to smooth things over, but the lady from Wolfbang Guild butted in wondering why Ling was acting like a big shot. The vice captain offered special treatment if they joined Wolfbang. Ling, however, walked past the vice captain like he was yesterday's garbage. Xiao's crew couldn't believe he turned down such a tempting offer. The vice captain, fuming, demanded a one v one duel to settle things. The players watching new things were about to heat up and made room. He taunted Ling, daring him to accept the challenge. Xiao's crew wondered if Ling had beef with Wolfbang since his hate looked worse than K-Dot's. Ling declined the duel and wasn't ready for his childish game. The vice captain wasn't taking no for an answer. He fired a fireball spell at Ling, who effortlessly dodged it and counterattacked. The vice captain narrowly dodged Ling's strike, shocked by how skilled Ling was. Just when things were about to escalate, Tina suddenly interrupted the fight with her vine spell. The nebulous guild members nearby grumbled, annoyed by her interference. Tina took one look at Ling and instantly knew this was the same player Dira had been meat riding. The Wolfbang crew weren't happy about Tina interrupting, but she explained that Ling was a friend of Nebulous Guild. The vice captain was irritated, as Nebulous had already interfered with their plans once before. When his escort was about to retaliate, he stopped her. He warned Tina to prepare for the monthly guild war since she would be their prey. As they walked away, the vice captain's escort wondered why he acted like a feeble little girl when they should have attacked Nebulous. The vice captain reminded her that starting a fight outside the guild war would cause more problems. He told her the guild war was the right moment to strike since it was a free for all. Meanwhile, Ling thanked Tina for stepping in, and Xiao's crew rushed to check if he was okay. Tina quickly noticed they weren't in any guild. She warned Ling that making enemies of a top guild like Wolf Bang was dangerous. She told Ling that he owed her a favor since she saved his butt. Ling, realizing she was right about the risks of not having a guild, he asked what she wanted in return and Tina smiled, ready to ask for her request. Later that night, outside the entrance of the Dark Forest, Tina approached Ling with a proposal. She wanted him to join the Nebulous Guild temporarily until the Guild War ended. She sweetened the deal by offering to pay him. Of course, Tana's real plan was to rope Ling in and somehow convince him to stay longer. Ling wasn't having it. He immediately rejected her offer, explaining he had no intention of joining any guild because it would limit his freedom. Tina, sensing she was losing him, tried switching tactics and got a little desperate, claiming he would get the freedom he wanted in Nebulous. Ling, suspicious as ever, 
wondered why someone from a top guild needed his help in the first place. Tina explained the long-standing rivalry between Nebulous and Wolfbang, and how it had escalated to a point where the upcoming guild war was make or break for them. Realizing she wasn't getting through to him, Tana resorted to blackmail, reminding Ling she'd saved him earlier. She hinted she would use her womanly charms on him if needed. Ling, not exactly impressed by her manipulations, advised her to just sit the guild war out. Tyne was shocked, asking how he could be so cold-hearted after everything she'd told him. To keep her off his back, he sent her a friend request and told her he'd consider her offer. Ling knew she was trying to use him, but he also realized she might have bitten off more than she could chew. Tyna, overjoyed, quickly agreed and started talking about guild procedures and formalities. She peeked at his player information and soon after Ling blocked access to his info. Meanwhile, from the sidelines, Bailey was fuming, glaring daggers at Ling for acting all high and mighty with his queen. As for Ling, he was sure he'd made the right call keeping his information hidden, while Sio's crew were busy goofing off nearby. He stabbed at them, claiming he would keep the reward if they didn't stop messing around. That got their attention real quick. A while later, Ling handed out the loot, keeping the cheap assassin's equipment for himself, and told him to share the rest equally. Ji Run asked why Ling didn't take the high-value items, given that he clearly deserved them more than they did. Ling waved it off claiming he wasn't interested in them. The crew were then thrilled at their newfound levels. They later agreed to keep grinding in the dark forest until Ling had gathered all the items he needed. They decided to log out for the night and meet again the next day. Ling logged out, feeling like his life was on a pretty smooth track. Thanks to the nerve gear, he could game and still get enough sleep. He spotted the old man sweeping the room and decided to lend a hand. The next day, they logged back into the game, and the cycle of insanity difficulty runs continued until Ling finally completed his equipment set by the third day. Afterward, he parted ways with Seo's crew, ready for his next challenge. A short while later, Ling was sneaking around in the Singing Moon Castle, a level 10 quest, scouting for a specific item. He hid from the high-level monsters patrolling the area, confident he could take one down if necessary but wary of being ambushed. Thanks to his agility and the cheap assassin's equipment, avoiding detection was easy enough. He wasn't there to fight the castle's boss, since his goal was the hidden item. Ling was after the evil spirit's invisibility, a stealth skill every thief dreamed of having. As he moved deeper into the castle, he came across some defeated monsters and couldn't help but wonder if another player had been through. He made his way through the castle and jumped down a waterfall like he was in a Tomb Raider game. Ling finally reached the chest containing the invisibility skill. He knew opening it would give him a debuff for six hours, but it was a small price to pay for such a powerful skill. Just as Ling was about to retreat to a safe spot to learn the skill, he heard voices. Realizing he wasn't alone, Ling quickly figured out there were other players waiting to ambush him. Ling was in a pinch. Will Ling escape or will he defeat the high-level players with his nerf stats? That is it for this video. Make a comment if you want a part 2 and don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel for similar content. And as always, thanks for watching.